this wasp has just stung and paralyzed the spider. She is going to drag the spider back to her burrow where she will proceed to lay an egg on the spider's paralyzed body. That egg will hatch into a larva that will then eat the spider alive. Nature can be tough, but nature is never cruel. Nature is good. Hunting is a part of nature, and hunting is good. Warning, what follows are graphic depictions of hunting. Your discretion is advised. Bullfrog here. I want to show you some rabbit hunting I did a few days ago. Now, I don't show myself hunting rabbits on my channel, and the reason for that is that rabbits are common in Florida, but you don't see them that often. They are secretive enough that you'll only spot one occasionally. Uh, you'll see them more often around gardens, but out in the woods, they're not that common of a sight, although they are definitely present. We have two kinds in Florida, the cottontail rabbit and the marsh rabbit, and I'm going to be hunting marsh rabbits. I don't know that I've actually really showed you all of the gear I take out with me when I go varmint hunting. So let me show you now. Obviously I have my gun here. This is my 30 caliber flex air rifle. And you've recently seen my bag if you followed any of my bushcraft videos. Uh, that's the Phoenix Infinitum Legion Air Bag. Uh, I have a Primos uh, tripod shooting stick and then I have a Helinox chair. This chair actually I bought for camping just to give myself something to uh, sit in that's comfortable around the campfire, and I found it makes a great hunting chair. It weighs about two pounds. Uh, you could get it to weigh a little less if you take those balls off the bottom of it. Those balls are actually something I've added to keep the legs from sinking into soft ground. Um, but the chair uh, by itself weighs a little less than two pounds, and you could probably get the same effect from those balls with tennis balls. Those are actually heavy rubber balls. They do add a lot of weight to it, but I find that they're worth it, so I keep them on there. The, the extra maybe half pound or so they add is not that big of a burn to me. You can see it sets up pretty fast. If I was deer hunting, I would take greater care about the noise I'm making putting it together, and I would just do it a little bit slower and avoid a lot of the flame. The weight capacity is 320 pounds. Thankfully, I'm getting well below that. I just weighed in today at 205. And I may not look it, but I am, I've am i lost quite a bit of weight. I've lost about 75, 80 pounds so far, so I'm getting there. Finally, I'm putting on my camera mount. This is my old Florida Outdoors camera mount. This is my design that I make. I used to sell these. I haven't sold them in about eight or nine months. I'm going to get back to selling them again. Stay tuned on my channel, and you'll see a lot more information about them. My scope cam is a Sony Handycam that's been modified to see infrared. It gives really good night vision and okay day vision. Uh, the camera I'm filming myself with is my good Panasonic. You can hear me talk about that in other videos, but it takes really good video. Inside my bag I have some toiletries, and I want to show you a little ice cooler I have. It's a soft cooler with ice packs inside. It's great for cleaning small animals like rabbits or coons in the field. As long as you bone them out, you'll have plenty of room. Everything else in the bag is for food. To my surprise, this rabbit eased out here while I was actually expecting a coon, and I decided to take the rabbit, that I could actually eat the rabbit on this camping trip, and it'll save me some camp groceries.
You can tell this is a marsh rabbit and not an eastern cottontail because his ears are short and round. Cottontail has longer ears. Also, cottontail has stronger back legs. This evening, we had some heavy rain, and I went back to the same spot again to get a coon, and out popped another rabbit, and I decided to take it too. Here I'm showing you another difference between the eastern cottontail and the marsh rabbit. Marsh rabbit has a very, very tiny tail, but it's not fluffy. Real quick, I want to show you how to skin a rabbit. Skinning a rabbit is really easy. Um, they actually are pretty weak animals. And in fact, for most of the skinning, you don't even need a cutting utensil. Let me show you. What you do is you start here at the bottom on the knee. And you grab it and push just like that and the skin pops off just like that I didn't pre-cut that or anything grab it right here and then it just pops right off this back speed on me a little bit okay. and then after that you just get a handful of skin and start pulling down and they just they just pull right apart just like that see how easy that is now you don't need a hatchet but I do have a hatchet with me when I get to it I'm going to use the hatchet to chop off the end legs here and the head but a pocket knife will work just as good you just have to saw it instead of hacking it off and then otherwise it's a lot like skin on a squirrel except the squirrel skin is a lot tougher than this you do have to you have to peel a squirrel back and get them started with a knife before you can take them off but here I've got them ready to hack Just comes right off and gutting it. You just make a little incision with your pocket knife. Tiny incision. You don't want to actually cut the guts open, you're just cutting open the muscle that keeps them in place. And then pull it out, stretch it out with your fingers here. See, they got real big gut cavities. This helps them digest the, the grass that they eat. And you just reach in there and scoop all that out. Now, what you can do, I'm doing this for the sake of showing you don't need to do a lot of cutting. I'll often take a pocket knife and then split them on up, split them on up right through here, and um, that way you can you can clean this out easier. But but you can get it with your fingers. Just got to keep reaching in there. Also, it's good to check their liver, make sure it ain't got any white spots on it. If it does, that means the rabbit's disease, and you want to discard it. Now I can tell you I've never actually seen that in real life. Just something I've heard about. By the way, this would be a good time to discuss. I was raised to believe that you're not supposed to hunt or kill rabbits in the spring and the summer. That you gotta wait for the cold weather, the first frost, because otherwise parasites that live inside of them will get to you. But if you after the frost, the parasites are killed by the cold weather. And what I don't un never understood about that is if that was so, a rabbit's body temperature should be the same temperature, whether it be in the summertime or in the wintertime. So why would a freeze kill the internal parasites when the rabbit's actual body temperature ain't changing the same? Now, it could be that, you know, whatever pa parasites the old timers were aware of um, had a seasonal cycle where they just happened to die in the wintertime and that coincided with cold weather. I don't know. But um, 
it's something you know kind of do it at, at, at your own risk but i don't really worry about it the main thing is just we're going to cook this rabbit real thorough probably a good idea to wear gloves doing this but i never wear gloves when i clean anything just out of habit and i can feel what i'm doing better uh, i am going to actually use my knife to sort of split the thighs open like that sorry i'm doing a lot of this a lot of this i think the camera is missing it when i do it look there's some rabbit poop rabbit pellet and i dropped it but uh, that just lets you really clean this out in here don't want to necessarily stick your knife in there though and start trying to scrape it out because it's very easy for you to cut something open you don't want to cut open and get poop or pee everywhere on your meat just use the knife to split things or split skin and bone and then use your fingers for all the cleaning all right, I'm gonna pick it a little bit of the little bit of the organ that's left in here but for the most part it's clean kind of looks like a giant squirrel and uh, I'm gonna go throw it in the cooler. Well, here's the obligatory slow motion that we air gunners always like to put at the end of our videos. Uh, you'll actually see in the second clip here, if you look closely to the right, you can actually see the pellet impact. As always, thank you for watching.